let me get the pencils here up front and central. I they come in um, they come in like a little flat thing and there's three sets. I have all of them. And if I were gonna pick a set, like let's say you couldn't afford all three sets, which um, you know, I would say just get all three. But if you can't get all three, I think maybe set two is my fave. Now that I have busted them out um, of their sets, I can't remember what's in set two, but you can probably look that information up online. When I tested the pencils, I got them and I just tested them blindly. I did not look at what anyone else had been doing with the pencils. I didn't want to be influenced that way and I wanted to kind of just do my own thing. Then I went back and looked at what Tim had done with them and what he said about them. And then I also looked at some other people and I've had this um, this demo planned since last week and then over the weekend I saw some people doing uh, one of the things that I thought of with it and that's kind of fun too. I love it when that happens. I have always had this belief that there is a creative subconscious in this um, community that we're part of. You know, it's like people all around the world are working with all these mixed media products and doing things and it's inevitable that people come up with the same ideas you know it's not ripping somebody off it's coming up simultaneously with the same idea it's this undercurrent this subconsciousness of our creative community and I think that that's a beautiful thing it's not a beautiful thing when you're just ripping people off and we've sure seen plenty of that I don't even want to go there today but it is a beautiful thing to celebrate this creative subconscious in our community all right um, Patty popped up my Amazon shop on there I've um, I have put some new stuff in there including these Strathmore ready cut watercolors these are cool. They're not the greeting cards. They're not in a, um, you know, in a pad. They are literally, um, they're the ones I have are five by sevens, but I think I'm going to get some big ones. They're already cut to size. They're Strathmore papers just cut to size if you're looking for a little sheet of watercolor paper. That's all well and good, but what I like more about it is that they're 100% cotton. And it's from Strathmore's 500 series, which is the high-end Strathmore. That's the best. And um, I've been using these. They're quite reasonable. You get 25 of them in a pack, and I've been using them a lot. They're not real heavy. They say they're 140 pounds, but they feel a little lighter weight than that. But they're real easy to use, and you just might want to grab some of these instead of always cutting up water paper to use. So anyway, um, also this handmade watercolor stuff is good with these pencils too. I think all of us have bought some of this at one time or another. Patty, this might be from this batch you bought. I know we um, exchanged some papers a while back. And then these that I'm gonna use are just from a, can a Canson pad and um, I cut those apart. I almost always buy the 9 by 12 pads of paper and then I cut them down. You can easily, easily cut them into 6 by 6s and have a little leftover and this and that. It's just how I maximize my paper, I guess. Alright, when I first got the pencils, I made a um, this um, I played with the colors and I made this little sheet here. Now I'm going to show you what I did just because I, I wanted everybody to see it um, for themselves how I made this. I did three of each color and the reason I did that was I think that there's um, there's three different ways that you can use this for sure. What is the texture like for the pre-cut? Well, you know what? It says it's cold press, and, but it is a very light cold press texture, and it's um, it's not it's nowhere near rough press. It's um, 
it is cold press, but it's um, not a heavily textured cold press, if that makes um, good sense to you. So I, um, I am not a huge fan of real textured watercolor paper anyway, so that's fine for me. But all right, so when I did these, I did three things. The first one was to just take the pencil itself. Now, these are woodless pencils, so there's no wood in these. It's all pigment compressed down into pencil form. And they're heavy. They feel good in your hand. I really like how they feel. This one is um, peacock feathers. As you know, since they're part of Tim's Distress line, they coordinate with all of his other Distress products. So that is very nice. And most of them are spot on. Some of them, the pigments go a little bit differently in the watercolor, but they're really nice. So here's how I did my, my little sheet here. I did two that were scribbled in. This one is just how it looks when it's scribbled out. This is one of Tim's little um, water um, brush, brush things. And you squeeze the water out and just put it on the pigment that you drew and you can easily blend it out. Now, I really, really like how that works, the ease of blending. What I also like, here happens to be peacock feathers right here. I don't know, I'm gonna try to raise this up. And if you can see it, it got the little line around the edge, which I really like. I, I think that that's so cool. I actually think that's supposed to be not a good thing, like watercolor people don't like that when it happens, but I do like it, so I really don't care what, what you're supposed to do. I, I like it when it gets that little line. I think it's cool looking. The third one I did was I take the pencil and I got a thing of water here and I just put it in the water straight away and wet it. And look at that. I mean, I love doing this. Look at the intensity of the color you get. I just love that. I think so too, Sue. I, I love that outline. Um, yeah, so the they're fantastic when they are wet. Yeah, my favorite is the wet too. I do this with all of my pencils that are uh, water soluble. Um, you know, you think about a Stabilo or um, something, um, Stabilo's or Caran Dash or any, a uh, Woody, even any of these, you can do that for. Janine, you're not much of a swatcher. You know, I, um, <laughs> I just find it oddly satisfying. Oh my gosh, I did it when my husband was watching a football game and, um, yeah, you can re-wet the stuff. Um, now, if you want them to stay dry, dry, though, I keep, or if you want them to dry down permanent, I keep my matte medium handy because then um, that way I can make it more permanent if I want. And here's the other kicker. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, let's say you had this dispensed in a little container. You could dip it in here. So I just dipped it in matte medium. And put it on there and I'm dragging matte medium around. Why couldn't we do that? Why have I never thought about that before? I mean, it might tend to bleed out on in your, you know, in your matte medium, but I think you could do it if it was clean. And then the only thing is you'd have to remember to wipe it off afterwards. But God, look at that intensity of pigment on my paper towel. I mean, these are the real deal. These are not um, some chintzy little product. These are very nice, highly pigmented watercolor pencils. And I do love that. The other way I would fix it, fix it meaning make them permanent, is I would keep a little jelly plate and put matte medium on my jelly plate, smear it out like this with my brayer, and then press it down on top and that way you don't have any smearing or movement in your color that is one way to fix it and make sure that it's permanent but as long as you're willing to work around it you can re-wet you can um, 
you know, play with these and add layers and it's fun, fun, fun. And the thing that I think Tim wants us all to understand, and I, I love this idea, is that these products all work together. All of the distressed products go together and they play well together. And that's what I'm going to show you today with my demo is how they do all work together. And um, I thought the price per set was pretty good too, considering they're all pigment. Um, yeah, I and I mean, I'm going to show you, I've sharpened them a few times and I'm going to show you how you can maximize that too and really get some bang for your buck. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side because we've had a look at that. And that is up on my Instagram page if you want to take a look at that even more or whatever. Um, I'm going to set this to the side and I'm going to show you some of what I've been doing. Alrighty then. And I do have other products here because, hey, Tim says use them with his other products. I'm going to use them with his other products because I always love to mix it up and I love to push the limits. And hey, Kathy, how are you? So glad you're here. Um, and so I want to show you a little bit about what I've been doing. This is a piece of the handmade watercolor paper that I was showing you, all right? And here I started out by spritzing it. I'm going to show you what I did and how we did it. I, let's see, how did I do that? <laughs> Let me think back, thinking back. One way that you can play with these is to put your color straight on your receiving surface. So um, this is Vintage Photo, that was Fred Burlap, and this is Rusty Hinge. All right, put it right on there. Now, I'm going to play with this exactly the way I would play with regular watercolor out of a palette or anything. I'm going to spritz it and get it super wet, okay? Now, I'm going to kind of mush this around. I could have just done the wetting part with the brush, but, you know, you can spray it or whatever. And the one thing that you can do is lay a stencil right on top of it. I know, Patty, I didn't say I was going to use this stencil. This is one of my stencils that I use a lot in the background. And you can blot up a little bit so it dries quicker. And then you just sit it, well, let's leave it here, Mary Beth, good grief. You, <laughs> it's supposed to be stuck to the paper, which is what I'm trying to do here. All right, you leave it stuck to the paper and you set it aside and let it dry. And then after it dries, you pull it up. Okay, here's one I made. And I did this on a little piece of watercolor paper. I just put all the color on it and then I laid this stencil down on top and I let it sit overnight. I did it at the end of the day. I know my screen's pulsating. We've got an internet fluctuation. It's going to calm down here in a minute. Stop it, you goofy screen. I'll tell you, it is always something anymore. Um, anyway, it is so cool then if you do it at the end of the day because then when you come in the next morning, you peel this up and oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I didn't even do anything um, else to this because I just loved how it looked. I mean, and that was just with putting a few, a variety of colors on there, laying this on top of it wet and setting aside. That's all I did. Yeah, the screen was having an anxiety attack. So I think this is a super easy way to instantly get a very nice result. Yeah, I like this stencil too, Kathy. I, um, I was looking around. I wanted to kind of get out of my box and try something different. And I really had a lot of fun playing with this one. So that is one technique that we're doing over here with the stencil. Same techniques, all right? 
All right, the next thing I did was I started, I did a million layers on this because I wanted to see how all of the products would layer up with one another. So I used some Distress Oxide. I used some of the sprays up here at the top. I used the glazing products that Tim has and it was really fun to see how they all work together along with the pencils and I'll have to say it's a pretty cool one-two punch you know if you're accustomed especially if you're accustomed to using Tim's colors you go oh yeah it's a vintage photo look really pretty on that and then boom you just grab it or grab the pencil or grab whatever and you can just you know add more you know uh, so I really did enjoy playing with all of the products together to see how I could um, layer them all up together that was fun all right um, this is another thing that you can do and um, I did it with this stencil again and I know you all have seen me do things just like this with other products um, other pencil and marker products but basically you just go and trace and this is when I started sharpening the pencils and I will show you my next trick <laughs> okay so you just trace it and then just get a brush or a water brush and come from the outside in and since it's pigment you can just you know paint use this water brush and just paint and again this is just one of those soothing things to do I mean really it's just very soothing you couldn't do it with a stencil with super super little spaces but you could definitely do it with one like the one I'm using that's got decent size shapes to work within and I just you know have to say I loved it so I um I, this remains a um a way that I like to work and this would set you up for you could do this on a journal page you could do it and then fussy cut what you've made I mean there's so many different options and things to think about but it's fun to do this little close detail work and especially with a robust watercolor pencil like this so super super nice and fun and easy all right let's look at this and you're going what is that hot mess? Well, this hot mess is what I discovered when I was sharpening the pencils. All right, so I had to, first of all, they do not like an electric sharpener. So find a better sharpener, a handheld sharpener, or do it yourself, you know, with a knife, like whittling. I actually do that from time to time. But anyway, um, I have two sharpeners that I found that they like. This one is the Fabriana. This is that one I got in Italy. I don't even know if you can get it in the States, but it's got all the different holes. It's my travel pencil sharpener by Fabriano. And this is one by this was Art Snacks, but I know they sell these in the stores, and you've seen this brand, KUM. And this is one of those two hole ones, and it has number one, number two. And if you have never known how to use one of these, I'm going to tell you right now because these are cool. Um, I should have gotten a different, this will be a good pencil to demo this with. Um, all right, so this is a pencil, and this is number one. You put it in and you sharpen, and it gets it sharper, but it doesn't go super, super pointy, okay? It just makes a decently nice pencil sharpen. Number two goes super pointy. So once you get used to using one of these, you're gonna love it. I don't even think I have these in my Amazon shop, but you can search for them because um, 
I think I've got something stuck in there, but anyway, it's a very, very nice, yeah, I do, I have a little, I have a little broken part down there in the end. Let me dump this out. Because I don't know if you're like me, but I like a really sharp pencil, <laughs> especially if I'm going to color detail stuff. I like it to be sharp. So having that secondary hole where you know you can go over there and sharpen it super sharp, and it would take a minute, but um, I'm not going to keep going, but you get the idea. It does go super sharp. So these are very, very nice, these two hole. And I had seen these for years, and I was always like, what? Why does it have two holes? It doesn't even make any sense. They're both the same size. Well, then I finally looked into it and figured it out. Yeah, that's the deal. Okay, so there's that. All right, so the hot mess. You want to know how to do this, do you? <gasps> okay, let me show you. So as I started sharpening the pencils, the tin pencils, I got all excited because this is what comes off of the tin pencils when you sharpen them. Yeah, this is pure pigment, people. I didn't want to throw this away because I thought I can use this because it's pure pigment. So this is where the like-mindedness comes in because yesterday, I guess it was yesterday or last night, Patty showed me this thing on Instagram, this lady, I think her, her tag on Instagram or her name is Kiron, C-H-E-R-I-O-N. But anyway, so she's taking these and she's putting them in little watercolor like half pans and I guess probably with some water and like making, you know, she's taking the shavings from one of them and making a half pan of watercolor. Kiron, I don't even know how you say it, but anyway, she's really clever. She does a lot of great stuff. Well, I hadn't thought of that, making your own watercolor. I just thought of this because I like that kind of madness. So let's get a piece of watercolor paper and I'll show you how you can just easily do this because it's so ignorant and it's, it's just so stupidly easy, but it's so stupidly fun, right? Just wet your paper. So I think this could be something you could do at any time. You could do it as um, the final touches on something. Um, you know, you could probably even do it within stencil shapes if you wanted. I mean, you put yours into pans, takes a bit to dry out. Okay, good to know. But look at that. Just put it right on the paper, your little, um, you know, your little shavings. It's like, how cool is that, right? Look at that. And they will follow the water lines. You know, look at those, just following that line on there. I just think it's so crazy, crazy fun, right? So you can get your regular watercolor brush and kind of coax it around. Um, I like the idea, though, of leaving some of that texture remaining because for me, that's also an interesting part is to look at the little bits of texture you have in there, right? It's kind of cool. So, you know, I don't think you want to move them too much because the more you move it with the water, the more they're going to just disintegrate into an actual paint like they are right now. Or you could leave it with texture. But I thought it would be even fun to, um, you know, go back to paintings that are maybe almost finished and drop a few little, like, pops of this it might be super cool i don't know i just was really stoked by it so now i mainly need to find a way to keep these because um this is not ideal if i ever have sterling in the studio he would be all over this and make a big mess out of it um, but look at this one when it um when i was sharpening it the edge of the paper I didn't peel the paper off first and the edge stayed on so I kind of wanted to glue that one down as a as a piece as a collage part because it's really cool looking 
So I thought this was fun and worthy of trying because, and especially, I mean, look at this. This is pure pigment, people. This is not something to throw away. So I got to um, get some little storage containers for these, I think. And that could warrant another trip to the Teacher Recycle Center. Now this one, I have already put some, um, some matte medium on. I put it on with this and I brought it across and you can see how it smeared the colors into each other. That is fine if you're prepared for that. I did have an orange in there so along with my cool colors and it made a little bit of muddiness in the background but you know I'm gonna put some collage bits on top of this so I think that will be all fine and good and that'll be you know it'll still work but if I had done it with this and just pressed it down with the matte medium it wouldn't have um, blended it up quite as much as it did so I am the mad scientist, so you don't have to be, although it is pretty much fun being a mad scientist. All right, finished pieces. These are two finished ones I've made. Um, I've got two more that I'm starting to lay out my collage parts, and they're not finished yet, but this is one where I started with that, that stencil I showed you a few minutes ago. This is what happens when you leave the stencil on top of the wet watercolor pencil. So I'm going to finish these up later today. I did want you to see a couple that were finished and look, I pulled out my little Tim clip and clipped a little piece of that silk up there that I had made and um, oh, I forgot my words. Can I? Yes, yes. So uh, quite a lot of fun. And these were with all of Tim's distress colors. Now, what I'm going to do right now, and I realize I'm going over time a bit, so if you need to take off, I get it. But I did want to show you this. I'm going to show you how to start these. And then I'm sure you all know how to go and collage afterwards. But let's just say, look, we got Jody Ole on here. Hey, girl. I miss seeing all of my peeps, all my like co-teaching peeps, you know. We haven't been out in the world for so long and um, I don't know, it's just weird. Life's weird. All right, so I wanted to show you how we could just start a piece fresh. So non-dominant hand, just take one of the pencils and just put down a few marks. Okay, now I'm going to use a small watercolor brush and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to dab a tiny bit of water on top of some of this so it starts to move a little bit. I don't want it to go wild at this point in time because I'm not ready for that yet, but I'll just put a little bit down and I'm actually going to grab a bigger brush. I don't know what I was thinking with that little brush. So um, these are these black velvet brushes I love so much from Silver. I have to say, Silver, my gosh, how did I get so lucky to work with these people that make these amazing brushes? And all right, so I've got some of that sitting there. Now I'm going to grab Distress Oxide Fossilized Amber. And I'm going to just put it right on here because why not? Now it's going to make a mess here, but we'll rub it off. It'll be fine. And then you know Distress Oxide, when you wet it, it oxidizes and it does some different things and other colors pop out. And I just love the unexpected nature of that is mainly what I love, right? Just love it. See how the fossilized amber is blending up with that was prize ribbon, I think. Yeah, this is prize ribbon. So now we've got some more wet on here and I'm going to start doing a little dripping. 
And look how it followed the line of the wet that we had created by um, prized ribbon. Oh, are those tiny clips in the shop? Good, Patty. I wasn't sure. Um, you must have stuck them in there. Awesome. Look how it's blending up into that beautiful green, right? So nice, nice, nice. So that's two of the products. Now, other ones I like, the Distress Inks, I love, love, love. So let's just put a stencil over part of this. This is not going to be able to dry down while we're on the air together, but you guys will get the idea here. I'm using speckled egg on top, and I'm going to just move that around. So it's going to a green speckled egg is mainly because there's so much fossilized amber on there, but I like that. That's one of my favorite ways to create color is to let them blend naturally together. Okay, so those will sit there. Then we could go back up here. Salvaged patina. This is the refiller from the Distress Oxide. So... What do you have here? Well, let's go up and put a little bit of linear here. Maybe down here. Because when I hit this with water, it is going to go, you know, blend out. I should have filled up my water bottle with. What do you think about this water bottle? I have had this water bottle for 20 years. It's like, isn't that funny? how you keep stuff and you just, they're your thing. Okay, see how it's gonna blend up down here with this fossilized amber? Love, love, love that. And I'm gonna let it run around the page a little bit more. It's even going down kind of around the stencil, so. A um, lot of opportunity. And doing it this way, where you draw a little bit, it's a museum piece now. Yeah, my water bottle, truly. <laughs> um, when you let all of this happen like this and you put a stencil on top of it and then let it sit out overnight, it's going to do a couple things. It's going to create that pattern in the background for you, which is so nice. And then it's also going to hold some whites because you're blocking out some areas. And I think that's really nice to do. I'm going to just I've tossed all of my collage elements off of these two that I had prepared. And you can see how down here I had used um, speckled egg and um, I think I used frayed burlap. And it gets these blends. And really, you can't tell where the pad versus the reinker, where the pencil, where one stops and another starts. But that's the magic of it. And you know what you can do is you can use the product that's right for you. Because there's sometimes when I'm at the end of a piece, I really want to come in with a pencil. And I want to put a tiny little detail apart. Or I want to do my, you know, my um, calligraphic gesture with it. And um, so I do really love having these pigments in stencil or in pencil form. These pigments are great. I have to say bravo, Tim. I, you know, he's a force. He is a force of nature, right? All the things he has. This is just a regular distress ink. Let's add a little bit of this to this one. I can't stop, you guys. I can't stop. Somebody make me stop. Because um, I think that these you know, orange and blue or green, they always are so nice together, right? Look at how it blends over top of that. It's so pretty, 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 pretty. And then let's move this guy. Come on, little buddy. Alrighty. This is already just doing its little magic work on here. It's so pretty. Then here's one I've sharpened pretty um, pointy, antique linen. And so you can just go right in there and find places where you want to, um, you know, do specific color. And I love that. 
So you can be doing something wild and woolly and something very specific, and you can add some calligraphic gesture. But when you come down to it, this is the best way to start a piece, is to just really let go and have some fun and, and get some freedom in those backgrounds because that is going to, it's going to prepare you for pieces, I think, that have, um, I don't know, uh, just that little, nice little look of a matchup of specificity with your collage, but also randomness with the backgrounds and the merging of it together. These pencils are going to help you merge it up. One thing I did here is I connected the collage element with the pencil over to the edge of the page. So, so, so many things to do. It is fun, you guys. I hope you liked seeing some of my experimentation. And oh, let's drop a little bit of shavings on here. <laughs> We might as well, right? And I hope you have time to make some art today. And I'll see you back here. Um, they've got my schedule. I'm thinking it's in two weeks. They, that would be Mary and Patty, my, my wonderful assistants. And um, I think it's in two weeks. Oh, don't forget your distress crayons because they're still going to work on these too, right? Look at this. It's like you gotta love it, people. Can also put that stencil right down on there and get a baby wipe. Get a little bit of a reaction. Just for some, that's a very random little line there. It's probably not even coming up on the camera as much, but anyway. Have fun, you guys, and I will see you the next time. I hope you all have a great day today. Take care. Bye-bye.